We have our fully adjustable clocking flange and riser. Put them together, you got a tall adjustable clocking flange. These things are awesome because you can adjust them in any way that you need to do. This thing moves, the top of that moves. But the cool thing is, is we have them in raw now. And we use a uh, Viton O-ring. So if fuel fit, hits it, that's not a problem. We use those on all of uh, all of our flanges and our spacers. This is the good stuff. This is the pro spacer and this is the pro flange, leveling clocking flange. If you put them together, then you have a tall pro build leveling clocking flange. Fully adjustable, by the way. First on the market like that. We've got a lot of different clocking flanges and spacers and things like that that uh, I'll go over and show the difference between the two and why we ended up making our own. And the other question would be, why do you need a clocking flange? If you're new to the ruckus scene, then uh, you're probably wondering what the heck I'm talking about. So here's a GY6 engine that's gonna go in a Honda Ruckus. And we're gonna do a fatty rear tire, just like this, like a fatty rear tire. If you, you're not doing a fatty rear tire, then you can just attach your carburetor with no leveling clocking flange, no problem. It'll just go on like that. A lot of guys will run a spacer like this so that it clears the frame and you bolt it up like that. Just imagine this is your carburetor. This is the intake manifold to the carburetor. So just like that. But let me show you why you need a clocking flange. So here's a GY6 with a eight inch rear wheel. If you notice, it has the old style leveling clocking flange. Nothing wrong with these. I'll explain why we made the improvements on ours. Um, so if you notice the little angle there, that's angled to level out the carburetor. Otherwise the carburetor is gonna be shooting straight up and the float level is just gonna be off. So that's why you level it. But why do you clock it? Because this is a clocking leveling flange. It's also a tall clocking leveling flange. So you, like I showed you, the two stacked. Um, if you don't use a clocking flange, you, you can't put your carburetor on. You see the carburetor, how it's centered like that? If I didn't have that clocking flange, then it, the carburetor would be hitting right over here on the frame. See what I'm saying? So it, it's definitely needed. And also it's raised up so it doesn't hit the frame here. So that's why we have the tall leveling clocking flange. That's why you need that. Only need it if you have an eight inch rear wheel on your GY6 Ruckus. Okay, so now that you understand what the clocking flange does, let me give you a little timeline of how things went. This is a really old clocking flange. This isn't a leveling clocking flange. This is just a clocking flange because it doesn't have the angle. Here is the same thing more of a modern one that has uh, the angle on it. So that's a leveling clocking flange. So that was back in the day, just a water jet piece. If you notice, if I tighten that down, you see that gap? It will never tighten down because the spacer is hitting the top of the head. Big, big problem because that's gonna cause an air leak and your carburetor will never run with an air leak. So those guys, those of you that are out there that can't get your carburetor to run worth for the life of you, Definitely check this. Way to check it is let the engine run. If it, if it can, spray some carburetor cleaner down in here. If, it's, if it has a leak, it'll suck the carburetor cleaner through there and then it will uh, kill the bike and you'll know you have an air leak. So you can go out to the garage right now and try that. The other problem that I see is it has a uh, paper gasket. A lot of times you'll need to uh, you know, put some silicone on there so it seals. Uh, but that's the big problem is it won't fit. So you'll either need to grind the head or grind the spacer to make it fit. The other big problem is you have these cooling shrouds that you want to keep on there. You try to drop it in there. If you notice it's hitting the shroud. So you need to Dremel tool the shrouds out. And then you got like the more modern version. This is a billet piece that's been CNC'd. It's got the leveling part where before it didn't, it wasn't level. It was just... It was just a clocking flange. Again, same thing. You gotta use a uh, paper gasket. And same thing happens though. Screw that in. I'll just kind of halfway do this. Same thing. You run into this. You have to grind the spacer or grind the head to make it work. Other problem. Try to put it in here. You have to grind the plastics. So still some leg work to be done. 
Uh, say you just wanted to use a spacer, same type of thing. This is a spacer, it doesn't have an O-ring or anything. Same same deal. Got a, that's a, This is like you'd use a spacer by itself if you were you know, running a skinny tire, but you'll still need that. Big problem. Well, it's not really a problem. That's what we, the way we did it for years, but if you can improve it, why not? And uh, you got your gaskets that you would use because it doesn't have an O-ring. Ours does. Um, so later on, the, so this is the way you do it. You'd stack these, then you have a tall clocking flange, kind of like this tall clocking flange. Um, then later on, you would uh, you would have this one, a tall clocking flange. It's all in one, so it's basically these two pieces together, which made things really nice. Cool thing about this one is you were able to drop it into the uh, cooling shrouds. You didn't have to cut it, which was really cool. Um, but same problem. Once you tighten it down, you still have an air leak there. And the other problem, in my opinion, is you're using uh, paper gaskets with some silicone or Honda Bond or something like that. Um, or you had the option of doing like the same type of thing, this guy, but then you have to cut your cooling shrouds. It does have an O-ring, but if you notice, the, uh, the walls are really, really thin and you, that would cause a problem. And the other thing is, is when you go to tighten it down, same exact problem. You got to grind the head, grind the cylinder. Um, we designed ours, 3D printed it first to make sure it fit. Let me, let me explain. So this is our spacer, 28 millimeter intake. So drops right on for any big valve head, no porting. You don't need to port and ma uh, port match it or anything. You notice there is not that problem. Fits perfect. The other thing is it has a flat square O-ring, whereas like, this style was a round o-ring, but see how thin those walls are? We don't have thin walls, so you're not going to run into that problem. And uh, the other cool thing is no uh, no cutting the cooling shrouds. Oops, I have it upside down. It goes like that. And then, uh, you know, you got your leveling clocking flange, just like that. It's a two-piece. So you can pivot it, move it for all you Metruck guys or... Uh, Mad Dog guys, fits perfect. And say you just wanted to use just the clocking flange, no problem. Still fits in there perfect. You don't have to cut the head or anything like that. Let's move this out of the way, tighten those down. You know, unlike, you know, like these guys. So this is our new and improved Pro Build Pro Spacer. It goes on there, comes with all the hardware. And then you've got this guy. That'll bolt just like that. So that's a plug and play using an O-ring, reusable O-ring, no, no sticky goo, Honda Bond or anything like that. That's our uh, Pro Flange. Check this out. This is our Pro Build 5-axis CNC GY6 intake manifold for 150cc through 232cc. That's gonna be the same bore as any of our big valve heads. So like this is a 232 head, the big valves. That's 27 and a half millimeter bore. Everything's gonna line up perfectly. Another little thing that we thought of is if you notice on an old like Chinese, just a crappy like intake manifold that you'd get on Amazon or any really, any out there, they use a rubber O-ring. They like to split kind of like this one. And the inside is not very smooth. I've actually polished this one up. This, this came from an old build. Normally they have really sharp edges on the inside. And also this in, this is 27 millimeters. You're missing about a half a millimeter there. So you, you take a Dremel and drill it out. We've done all that for you. This is five axis CNC. We've got the uh, Viton O-ring. This will never expand with fuel touching it. Since it's synthetic, it won't dry rot. You've got the silicone intake hose with stainless steel clamps and stainless steel hardware with washers. I kind of took this thing apart, this one here. And uh, you can see it's braided. It's got the, the the lip there, so it won't come off. Some of the cheaper ones are just a hose that's been cut down. This has the lip with the stopper and all that. Stainless steel hardware, of course. And one of the really good upgrades that we made, which you find on a lot of these, your normal uh, vacuum hose on 3 16 line. This is like the standard line. This never fits. It's just it's like, what the heck? So you have to like really crank down on it. And on, of course, ours, 
you know, we've got the correct nipple on there. It won't come off. So that's pretty cool. That's our intake manifold. We recently came out with our EFI intake manifold as well. Same type of thing. The build quality is all there. But we have our clocking flange and our clocking space. So this would be like a tall leveling clocking flange here. You can mount that sucker up there just like that. Or we'll just use this one since it's not attached to this hose. You can attach it there. It can move around however you want. So we've got all these CNC pieces. This is the leveling. You'd use this to level your carburetor. That's what the point of it is. And this will, you use this to raise it up. All Viton X-ring, good stuff. This is our lineup, our pro build lineup. And like I said, you can, you can tilt this, move it any way you want. It's the most adjustable clocking flange on the market and the best one, of course, I would think so. It's ours, but there it is. Sweet.